I live downtown. I work just off of downtown. And I spend uh, the majority of my time surrounded by cars and not people. Uh, I've also seen a number of accidents and, and some of the misery of people working for their car to make the payments, the leasing payments, the insurance payments, this sort of thing. And uh, you just start to see it as a, a slave state after a while, where people are working for their motor car. They're going to work so that they can pay for their car to take them to work. And it's just a dead end. And uh, the breakthrough was really about uh, two and a half or three years ago when lithium ion and batteries fell onto the surplus market inexpensively. We were able to merge the uh, two qualities of lithium ion batteries, the quick recharge and the lightweight, to a transport application. And really the sun became relevant for transportation at that time. And I've uh, seen a lot of stuff for the last you know, 10 or 15 years, university projects trying to make, break the 100 kilometer mark and the 120 kilometer mark, and yet they can't take you to the store, they can't contend with real situations. They, they operate in a controlled environment with car escorts and stuff like that. And we believe that that's, uh, that negates the vehicle as a solar vehicle when it has to be a company. So what we've been doing is building inexpensive $1,500 vehicles, publishing the plans online, and using them in the environment in which we live, which is downtown Montreal. Now you publish the, the plans of how to build these vehicles. Do you have any tracking on the site? to, to 100, give you 100,000 downloads in less than a year. 100,000 downloads? Yeah, and that's solarvehicles.org. That, yeah. that, that has impact. And yet, you know, I come here to Montreal and nobody's told me mm -hmm. in the media mm -hmm. for open consumption that, mm -hmm. that you found something that mm -hmm. could really benefit me. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's the same reason why the corporations and the governments aren't, uh, aren't giving people this. Uh, the technology that runs that vehicle is as far away from you as your cell phone. I mean, it's really, uh, you know, I'm not a trained engineer. Uh, my partner is not a trained engineer, though he is a very uh, bright thinker and an artist and a creator. And uh, it, it, it's actually, uh, on the one hand, baffling that the corporations haven't given this to the people, but then you stop to think about it and you're like, you know, they're making 50 bucks off of every person who owns a motor car every single week. Why would they give you an alternative? And they're not going to. There's no commercial model for that. Now, you've obviously talked to, not only to me, but to other people about this. How do people view your passion for this? Do they, do they look at you as being slightly anarchic or, or, or revolutionary or a nonconformist? How do people normally view what you're trying to do? I think they find it very interesting. And, and I think their first reaction, which is usually a smile on their face, is uh, probably the most telling. And, um, you know, we uh, try to explain it to people as something that's, you know, very accessible and something that they can do themselves and go to the website and get the plans. But unfortunately, I think uh, a good portion of the mass public is so set in their routines and is so, so enslaved with their monthly car payments and things like that that they don't have time uh, to do anything about it. And that part of it is very frustrating. And we're now on a third year, fourth year, uh, out on the streets with these. And uh, what we're finding is that there is a, you know, people are just reluctant to, they, 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 they don't believe in their own abilities, I think, is, is what it comes down to. They're so preoccupied with making payments of different kinds that they don't have the liberty of free thought and they don't have the confidence in their own abilities to, to make one of these. I think if they actually tried, they'd be pleasantly surprised and they'd probably make one better than I could make. Okay? There are people with uh, greater uh, bases of experience for this sort of work than I have, and they uh, could probably build a better vehicle, but they need the incentive to do so. The vehicles that you've got are very, very experimental. They're, they're prototypes. They're prototypes. How soon do you think that if, if you were allowed, if the government and other people gave you the support that you feel that you deserve from them, how soon would, would you be able to produce something that would be user-friendly, that people would Oh, right feel away. Right away. It's happening right now. I, I I mean, you know, we uh, crisscross the city uh, pretty regularly. We go to destinations in the country. We go into the Laurentian Mountains north of Montreal. We, you know, go around Ottawa, Le Chute, Quebec, this sort of thing. You know, uh, we're already doing it. And I really think that that's going to be the precipice for change, people actually seeing the application being applied. And uh, so it's happening now. As far as an assembly line and this sort of thing, you know, the components are basic components. If a company can put together a camcorder, they can put together one of these. Sleep. The reason is uh, 
or I guess the, the more basic question is why aren't they doing it? And that's where the uh, insidious side of our current corporate world really rears its, its ugly head. I mean, you can't tell me Sony Corporation couldn't put one of these things together. You, couldn't, you can't tell me that a Halliburton or a General Electric or a what you know can't put one of these together. I mean, it's you know, and it's 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 really baffling and starting to get frankly a bit discouraging that after a year and a half of having the plans on the web, we're still the only people that have vehicles that are practical solar vehicles. And and I don't understand. Well, I do understand it, but I, I'm reluctant to accept that understanding because it just paints such a dark picture as to people's real motivations. But if you have obstacles like this, how can you progress at the speed that you would like to progress? How can you get round mm -hmm. large we, corporations that quite clearly, as you say, Sony yeah. could do? So you've identified, you, you've identified the beachhead, okay? And the way we've attacked it is not by trying to start production ourselves, but through education. By educating the 100,000 that downloaded our plans in the last year, we believe that we might get seven to ten groups building these. And uh, we've had reports back from groups in India, Sri Lanka, doing this uh, this sort of work with solar rickshaw type things and, and that's very encouraging but the idea being that uh, they'll be able to shut a group down but they won't be able to shut everybody down and by spreading out the approach through educating uh, the people and, and challenging them to build their own and supporting their own and understanding their own vehicle and understand the new approach to energy the movement which is what it's becoming will be too big to stop now if we had followed a corporate model and tried to set up an assembly line of some kind, I really think that uh, we just make too, much, uh, too easy a target for somebody to stop the progress of this uh, knowledge.